and I increased my cash flow to about eighty five hundred a month. Oh, come on. How many people could use eighty five hundred dollars a month passively? Hey everyone, Joe Moffat here with Master Life by Design, and I am excited to be here with my next guest, Sarah Weaver, for the Millionaire Series. Sarah, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Joe. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, so excited. You are the first female powerhouse that we have on the Millionaire Series, and we've hung out before and spent some time together, and I absolutely love your story. I love what you're doing. I think so many women, not just women, but men out there too, but especially female entrepreneurs or people who want to be entrepreneurs, you're going to inspire them with your story and what you've done and you've created in your life. So I'm really excited to have you. Why don't we start off with a little bit about your background, where, how did you get to where you were in real estate in the beginning, how that journey was to where you are now, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Absolutely. And let's make sure that I'm the first of many female millionaires that you have on the show, which we yes. can definitely make happen. Yes. <laughs> so thank you. My, my journey um, really started out when I read a book, Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Workweek, um, that paired with a lot of travel experience. So, um, in undergrad, I studied abroad and I thought, oh man, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I got a degree in international studies and journalism and mass communications because you guessed it. I wanted to be an international journalist and I did that. I was, I was a journalist. I actually worked for a pretty popular publication. Maybe you've heard of it. Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I had a gig with, it wasn't with Sports Illustrated, but kind of like a contract work with them in London. And so my dreams came true. I was 22. And by that time I had had an internship in Munich, Germany. I was working for Sports Illustrated, had a gig in London and something was missing. And I thought, nope, this isn't it. And so I pivoted and ended up teaching English in South Korea and again thought, hmm, this isn't it either. And so thankfully, I found out that the gift of gab that I have been gifted could be used for good and that sales is not icky. It can be wonderful. And so I became a real estate agent in Austin, Texas. So mm -hmm. talk about actual whirlwind around the world adventure, ended up in Texas, and I thought, shoot, this isn't it either. I don't want to live in one place. And so I made a decision in 2015 that I wanted to be location independent. I wanted to be able to travel wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted, within reason. And that's what I did. So I started working for a female entrepreneur and was able to travel the world. And that's kind of where my journey started to to take a, a shift. Nice. I love I love the fact that you discovered that you love to travel. And obviously in journalism, you have to love that. Otherwise, you're not going to last very long. So tell me more about the mentor. You, you decided to work with this female entrepreneur. Was she a mentor to you? You know what? She turned out to be. So she started as my boss. She, um, she owned a staffing agency. So never did I ever think I would end up in staffing, but that is what I did for four and a half years. I helped real estate agents grow their team by helping them staff administrative staff. Why I loved the job was I could live anywhere. So with that job, I spent, you know, three months in Portugal, three months in Brazil, three months in Argentina, three months in Mexico, traveling all over the U.S. Like if a grandparent needed me, I could hop on a plane and be there. It was the best job. And she was such a cool boss because she was also a traveler. I actually think that while I was a real estate agent with a journalism degree, I think she hired me because of my travel resume and she thought I was cool and I thought she was cool. <laughs> and so what she taught me was that if you have a good idea that solves a problem, that's not a business. But if you have a good idea that solves a problem and people are willing to pay you to fix it, then you have a business. And so I didn't realize then what I realize now, which is I learned so much from that job about what it means to be an entrepreneur, definitely life by design. That boss moved from Boston to Florida to Portugal to Spain, where she still is today, 
all while I was working for her. And so she taught me a lot about kind of what it's like to create your business around your life, not your life around your business. Oh, so good. So many people, they they look at their work schedule and they say, okay, how can I go on vacation here, or there, even business owners? And me and my wife, we're the opposite. We say, let's pull out our calendar and put our vacation or the places we want to go throughout the year. And we'll just build everything around that. Right. And so I love what you said, because you are living and you have been living you're like the fruit of life by design, right? Like At least that's what I like to call master life by design. It's consciously creating the life you want while having this lifestyle. But you can travel and you can have this awesome lifestyle. But if you're working a job, you're really just, you're working in a different location, but you're not really free. And yeah. life by design is where you're free. You can make the choices because you have the income. So I know a little bit about you, but the audience doesn't. So you you worked that job. What allowed you to move forward to get to where you are today and cash flow? And let's talk about how you got free, not just lifestyle, but also financial freedom. Absolutely. And I just want to reiterate what you said. You pull out your calendar with your wife and you write out your vacations and then you plan your business around that. I think that is so important. And that's actually something that I ask all of my coaching clients to do is I ask them, what's your conference schedule look like? Are you going to any conferences, masterminds, events? What does your vacations look like? And make sure those are scheduled first. And so I, I love that. And then because I love to be a one upper, I'm going to one up you on this one. Uh -oh. I made a list of what I wanted to do for 2023. And then I started a travel company last year. And so now what I do is I write a list of where I want to go and then I create a trip and then my business pays for it or I, I create a business where clients will pay for these experiences. So I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but I own a travel company now called Invested Adventures and I take real estate investors all over the world on epic adventures. And we're talking epic adventures. So uh, 11 and nine, so two different trips. So 22 investors, they are going to hike the W Trek in Patagonia down in Chile. And we're doing that in February and March. In wow. 30 days, I'm going to Guatemala and we're hiking a 14er, which happens to be a dormant volcano next to an active volcano that spews lava every hour, like on the hour. So we're doing really, really epic things. And that was a dream job for me. And now it is not only just my job, it's my business. Uh, come on. How cool is that? If you're watching right now, especially if you're a female, like who doesn't want to go for a walk around some lava, right? And learn and <laughs> get educated, learn how to make money while having epic adventures. I love that. And the coolest part is, if you're a new entrepreneur and you're you're like, man, how do I get to that seven-figure mark and live that lifestyle? You got to understand that these trips for Sarah, not only does she have people paying for them, she's also using that as a deduction. Her entire business trip is a tax deduction. So it lowers her taxes. Like how cool is it that you're not, you're going to actually save money by going on these epic adventures? So if you don't understand that because you're new watching, you'll understand more to come or do a little bit more research, but it's crazy when you own a business or businesses like Sarah, what you can do and how you can learn to pay no taxes. That's a whole nother conversation. So, all right. Absolutely. So you already told now, us one of our businesses. Yeah. Now I should fill in the gaps. <laughs> Cause yes. people are like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You worked for some woman that lived in Europe or something and you did what? So, so what I did while I was working for, for other people was I started to create passive income on the side. And so I bought real estate it, and it, it really did start out slow. I bought a house when I was 27 turned it into a rental. I bought a house, a duplex when I was 29, turned it into a rental. And then I realized that I was into something or onto something, I should say. And I made a decision in 2020 that I am a real estate investor. I started identifying as one. I started doing the things that a real estate investor would do. So I was researching markets and analyzing deals and writing offers, even when I was scared. And I think that that's important that I mention. 
you guys, a lot of the stuff that I do, like travel around the world by myself and start businesses or quit my job. So hint, I ended up quitting my job. All of this stuff is scary. Like I'm not some like superhuman with no emotions. Like I still get nervous when I do certain things, but I do it anyway. Yeah. And to Sarah, what was the mindset for you? Because obviously that fear penetrates our, our thinking and, yes. you know, pulses through our bodies. Like we're in that fight or flight and you're right there. You find a good deal. You have this LOI or this offer you want to put in, but you're so scared. Like what was the mindset shift for you to say, you know, to actually move forward? I think what it was is, is the realization that if you buy the plane ticket, First of all, you could always not get on the plane. I mean, it'd be a, it could be a waste of money, but you could always not go. So I always buy the plane ticket. Then you get excited. So then you get yourself on the plane. And then you realize if this doesn't work out and if this trip doesn't work out, guess what? You have a computer in your pocket with your phone and you just buy another flight and you can yeah. always come home. Like there's always a backup plan. So same thing with if you're thinking about quitting your job, guess what? You can likely always go get another job. Mm -hmm. So for me, the mindset shift was there's always a backup plan. There's always a plan B. And I want to be a person who says yes more than I say no. Yes. I love that because there's so many opportunities that come to us. And a lot of times I, I found people are so afraid of it not working out that they never realize what the potential could be if it does work out. Right. And the only way that happens is if you say yes. So I love that. I absolutely love that. So, okay. Awesome. So you got a couple deals. You started identifying as a real estate investor. Um, where was your cash flow at after about that second or third purchase? Yeah. So when I owned two properties or three units, my net cash flow was 1100. Um, some months it was like, you know, 1300, depending on utilities, but I'm a, I'm a really conservative investor. So I'm a risky person. I travel alone. I do online dating. I'm, you know, I'm wild you guys, but when it comes to my investing, there was no backup plan. I have the most supportive parents emotionally, but not financially. Mm. So I don't have rich parents. I'm not married. I don't have double income. And I wasn't making very much money. The most I made from a W-2 was $57,000. Ooh. And then yeah. before taxes or after? That was before taxes. So tell, okay. So there's people that are listening. They're like, wow, she's inspiring. She started out in real estate, but now they're finding out that you brought home well, less than 50 grand net. How did you get a loan for the first house? Like, how did that work out? Is there programs? Like, did you have to put a lot of money down? Like, where was that at? Absolutely. So I was 27. I was living in Denver, Colorado, working for the company that I mentioned. And I realized that I could afford a house up to $250,000, $300,000. I had great credit. I had no other debt. Because I taught English in South Korea, that paid off all my student loans um, by saving a bunch of money. There's no program where they like wipe out your loans. But I just taught English in Korea, lived like a dirty backpacker, saved, 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 and I paid off my student loans. So I had no debt. And, and I paid for school by myself. Again, I love my family, but they weren't paying for my college. So I definitely, um, I save more money than the average person. That was, I've always been a saver and I made a decision in my twenties that I was going to save as much money as possible so that I could spend it on, you guessed it, travel. <laughs> so I'm really good at saving money. And so I bought that first house for $217,000 and it, only required 3% down because I did live in it. So it was an mm -hmm. owner-occupied conventional loan. It was not an FHA loan. I think a lot of people think that that's what it was. It was actually called the Home Ready Program, which if you are making less than 80% of the median salary in your area, you qualify. Ooh, so that's what I did. So what that meant is I bought a house, you guys, for seven grand. I filled it with roommates. I moved... I bought a one-way ticket to Portugal to go hang out with that boss, actually. Go hang out with that boss. We went on a girl's trip to Morocco that summer. And I realized, I was like, wow, I'm making money and I'm getting my mortgage paid for. So by the time I put someone in my room and really became a true landlord, I was netting 700 a month. So Sweet. I paid seven grand and I net 700 a month. Now today it's a little closer to 900 a month. 
Wow. So for everyone that's new, she literally was getting paid to travel. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hearing, right? Like yeah. how cool is that now? Can we live off of $700 today with inflation? Probably not. Now I don't know no. anyone that can, uh, even if you live under a box, under a bridge, like not even possible, right? Food's inflated. But um, here she is beginning her first journey with her first house. And after getting, so how long did you have to live there before you went and bought the duplex? You intend to live there for a year. And I wasn't really in a hurry. I wasn't hanging out with other real estate investors. I wasn't consuming real estate investing content. And so people ask me like, do you regret not buying real estate faster or sooner? And I'm like, no, I really, you guys, I moved to Brazil. I lived in Argentina and Mexico that year. No, I'm not really full of regret. Like I lived a really cool life. Um, and it took me two years to buy my next property. So bought that next property two years later. And that property also nets about 700, 800 a month. So I'm at, you know, 1500 a month. Let's conservatively just call it 1100 a month. And that's when I made the decision like, holy, holy crap, this is working. Like I should buy more property. So I made a decision that I wanted to invest in real estate and I wrote offer after offer after offer and it didn't work. I was getting term, mm -hmm. I was like getting rejected. If I did go under contract, I terminated. And so everything changed when I zeroed in on my criteria. So I decided I wanted to house hack one more time, which means get an owner occupied loan. I knew I wanted to quit my job. So I wanted to do that one more time and then I, you can quit. And so that's exactly what I did. I was living in New Zealand at the time. For listeners out there, I know my story is really confusing, but just stick with me. I'm always traveling, all right? <laughs> so I I bought a fourplex and because it allows you to put three and a half percent down when you live in the property, that was $12,000 down. My net cash flow is three grand a month. Wow. Yeah, wow. No Are you guys idea. listening to that? Like now here's what I want to ask. This is because everyone's like, man, they hear the $3,000 a month cash flow. How many homes did you have to go through? How many letters of intent or, you know, offers did you have to put in before? And how many deals did you have to analyze before you found that fourplex so you could cash flow three grand a month on that one yep. alone? That was my 18th offer. I went under contract four times out of the 18, terminated all four, and this was my fifth time going under contract and then made it to close. On average, I analyzed 10 to 30 deals a week. So let's call it 20 deals. That would be 800 deals a year. Wow. So you, everyone hears the 3,000, which they all want. We all want that, right? However... Are you willing to put the work behind what it takes to get to that $3,000 a month cash flow? And that's just from the one building plus the other cash flow she had. And so between those three, your total cash flow was what? Um, let's call it 4200 How many people nowadays, first of all, I know people that don't even make $4,200 a month, right? But could live off of 4200 a month right now. If you were really conservative, if you have a family, obviously, you know, it's going to cost more. I mean, it costs five figures to run our family household for one month, right? Like that's crazy to me, but here you are, you're $4,200. Do you have any debt outside of what you have for the mortgage, but the mortgage is paid for at that point? Yep. So yep. All of the like monthly costs are covered. And what I want to make sure is really clear. You guys, I'm not telling you to house hack. Like if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are a high income earner or you want to be, I'm not convincing the world to move to Nebraska or I wouldn't really be in business. So let's just run the numbers as if you were going to put 25% down. So if you put 25% down on that same property, you, Joe, would have put down 80, maybe $88,000. Mm. And you'd still cash flow. We'd actually cash flow even a little bit more because your monthly payment would be a little bit more. So your cash flow would be a little bit higher. So then your cash flow would be, your net cash flow would probably be, let's call it 3,200. That's still incredible numbers. And so stick with me. I'm not teaching everyone to house hack because after that, that is when I realized I am a real estate investor. So within 90 days, I bought that fourplex. I bought a duplex, a duplex, and the fourplex next door. So I own two fourplexes next door and two duplexes next door. And I increased my cash flow to about 8,500 a month. 
Oh, come on. How many people could use $8,500 a month passively? I think maybe you would go to Argentina or Brazil or, you know, travel to US. What would you do with an extra $8,500 a month? And so at this point, you have no job. You're full-time real estate investor. You have over eight grand a month coming in. How did you feel at that point? Like, what were some of the thoughts and the emotions coming up for you at that point? Were you proud of yourself? Yeah. Were you excited? I like, mean, I still, you? I'm like getting emotional now. It's like, I did that. Like, and I did it. You don't do anything alone. So when I say I did it all by myself, like I had great on the ground agent contractors, other investors who were willing to analyze deals with me. I had support. But I also, you guys, I did all of this by myself, like with my measly 50, let's call it $57,000 of a year salary. I had traveled to 44 countries and I owned at that point, like $1.7 million worth of real estate. I got to stop you. That's amazing. <laughs> One, almost $2 million in real estate at that point. <clears throat> People might say, okay, you were making $57,000 a year gross. You're traveling in all these countries. Were you like staying at the Four Seasons? Like, how were you <laughs> living while you were traveling? Because oh, oh yeah, we should probably tell them. So yeah. I was not staying at the Four Seasons. Um, I still don't stay at the Four Seasons. You guys, I was a dirty backpacker. I was staying in Airbnbs where I would rent a room in someone's house. I was staying in hostels um, in New Zealand. I bought a van. <laughs> so I really do believe in delayed gratification. I know someday I will travel very luxuriously. I've even gotten a taste of it this year, attending certain conferences where you get to stay at a nice hotel. And don't get me wrong, I love luxury travel and I understand it has a place and a time, but it didn't have a place and a time for me in my 20s. Mm. It, was, it was choosing between between a week vacation in, let's say, Hawaii, that's going to be amazing, or Greece in a nice villa, or three months in Argentina. And so for me, I, Sarah Weaver, single, no kids, with a love of travel, I chose the three months in Argentina. So you, that's amazing because I love what you said. I've gone through it too delayed gratification in today's society everyone yeah. wants everything instantly they wanted like microwave form like let's go give it to me let's have success right away and i remember when i was 30 40 thousand dollars credit card debt for the third time and i was coming out of it i had to say no to going snowboarding with friends with going on trips even going out downtown friday saturday nights because for me i was putting my money towards debt but for you you were doing something different not only were you yeah. having epic experiences at a low cost, you were actually putting that money towards future investments. Yes. And, that's and, and I think ahead. it's so important. Um, I'm not convincing people to go travel in hostels, you guys. What mm -hmm. I'm wanting you to do is I'm wanting you to really look at what's important to you. And it probably is that you want to stay at a nice place in Greece. And so do that. So create other income streams or save your money in other places in your life because we only get so many trips around the sun. That, yeah. That's how I like to look at a year is always, uh, you know, everything I tie back to traveling. And so you only get so many trips around the sun. So don't wait. Like if you've wanted to do an African safari, you don't need to wait until you're 55 or 60. Like you could do that in 2023. Yeah. So the point here is Sarah's trying to tell you guys what she's doing is creating passive income. She's giving you a strategy on how she did it. She was a house hacker first and then like a full-fledged real estate investor. And so you've, you house hacked, you got to this point, eight grand a month. Then were you still working a job at that point Did you or did you quit? Where were you? Yeah. So I, I thought I could do it. I was like, I'm going to be a full-time real estate investor. So I left one company and you guys, I lasted about two and a half weeks <laughs> because I got scared. I got scared. I was like, what if this doesn't work out? And people started to hear that I was, you know, on the market, but I, I was no longer with that company and people started offering me jobs. It was great for my ego. I was super flattered. And so I ended up taking a job and fast forward, I lasted eight weeks. <laughs> yes. So it was, it was, it was really important, I think, for my journey that I did actually go back to work for those eight weeks because it was, it really solidified. Like it was like a whisper. It was like, Sarah, 
you got this. Like, you can do this. And so I did finally, I left uh, my last W-2 in October 2021. So not that long ago, you guys. Wow. So this whole journey, you've been unemployable for the last almost, what, 18 months, almost two years, somewhere around there. And so you were saying in the beginning, you have multiple businesses. You left that work in 2021. What are you doing now? What's sustaining you? What's causing you to grow? What are you excited about? Because I know for you, you are mastering life by design. You're creating the life that you want. What does that look like now? How do you, uh, how do you impact people? How do you make income? How do we do that? Absolutely. So as you guys know, I bought real estate. I own now 19 units in four states. Half of my portfolio are long-term rentals. Half of my portfolio are furnished rentals. They are really the kind of the foundation of what allowed me to then do what I do now. So now I travel the U.S. and Canada talking about what I do teaching others how to invest in real estate. Specifically, I love teaching real estate agents how to invest in real estate because not only will it help them turn their commissions into passive income through rentals, but then they turn around and they help their clients build wealth. So I always like to look at who can I serve and then they're going to go be an army and serve other people. So love helping real estate agents invest in real estate. And I do that by traveling to real estate conferences and brokerages speaking. Then at the end of my presentation, people say, okay, but can you just help me do that? <laughs> so naturally I started a coaching business and I have the mentorship program. It's a 12 month program where I help people with no rentals or 10 units, wherever you're at in your journey, I'm going to help you go further. And what I love about the mentorship program is I attract people from all different walks of life, but we all have two things in common. We all want to add more passive income through real estate investing, yeah. and we want more freedom because they likely want to travel. So we talk a lot about what we'll always talk about credit card hacking and traveling and how do you do this and what do you do? So the mentorship goes way beyond how to analyze deals, how to pick a market, how to do out-of-state investing. And then I wouldn't be serving myself if I didn't mention while I was doing all of this, I discovered a strategy called the medium term rental strategy where you furnish it like a short term rental, but you rent it out for 30 days or more. And I am now an expert because I wrote the book. Bigger Pockets is publishing my book, 30 Day Stay, a real estate investor guide on medium term rentals. Woohoo! Congratulations as a pu published author. That's so exciting. We'll have to make sure the sh uh, in the show notes, there's a link for that. So congrats to you on that. So, okay. Thank what, you. Is, thank you. Thank it, you. What else? I know you said you had one other business. Is that, was there one more? Yes. So, so then what happens, Joe, is I, I convince all my, you know, speaking presentations, my coaching students, everyone to go get a furnished rental. And then they're like, okay, but how do I furnish it? So I started Aria Design Services and we will furnish it for you. Um, we have all sorts of services. I will definitely put some info in the show notes, but what I'm most excited to talk about, and I teased everyone earlier is what happens next? So Joe, you you heard me speak, you became my mentee, you bought rentals, you hired Aria to furnish them. And now you call me and you say, Sarah, I have so much time and money on my hands. What do I do? And I'll say, Joe, why don't you come on an epic adventure with other real estate investors with my travel company, Invested Adventures? Yes. And that's where you guys can go do your epic adventures. I love that. I absolutely love it. Guys, if you're listening, you literally have a roadmap. If you want to join Sarah on the journey from where she started, and maybe you're there, or maybe you're just a little bit ahead with one or two rentals to where you can be traveling the world with other real estate investors. And Sarah, I know I might know this because you know I spend time with a lot of real estate investors. I'm one too. When people go on these epic adventures, obviously you guys have a blast. How many people come back home and they partner up and do deals together? I am so glad you asked. So my second retreat was in January, 2022. So we're about 10 months out from that. There were 17 of us, including myself, and nine of us went under contract 
two to six weeks after the event. And out of those nine people, seven said that they wouldn't have done that without the retreat. Mm -hmm. So two were already, you know, they're like, oh, they're savvy investors. They're already going to buy real estate. But seven of the nine or seven of the 17 bought real estate within two to six weeks of the event. That is why I do what I do. I actually, I named it, I call it the after effect. So the events are awesome. They're epic. They're super fun. But the after effect is so amazing because what happens is you come to this event and you get your voice back. Mm -hmm. So I've had someone come to my event and then go home and talk to her boss about how unhappy she was. And the, I don't teach that. Don't worry, guys. Don't You can send your employees. <laughs> I don't teach you how to talk to your boss or ask for a raise. But I gave her her voice back. And then someone else went home and had a really hard conversation with their spouse because she said I, she figured out oh. a better vision for her life because of that. Oh, we had a technical difficulty, but we heard that at the end. And what okay, was the result cool. of her voicing with that voice? Yeah, she she really went all in on a business that she believes in and she's making more money. She's bought more rental properties, so she has more passive income. But more importantly, she's spending more time with her kids. Mm. And that was part of her vision. And so what I love about the event is it takes you out of your day-to-day. -day. It removes the noise that you have in your life and it surrounds you with other people that are crushing it. In, mm -hmm. in life, business, or real estate investing. And that's what we need. Like my events give you the community that you crave and the connection that you deserve. Yeah, so key. I'll tell you, there's there, I've done a couple of deals that I wouldn't have done if it wasn't for being part of a bigger community mastermind um, because that fear kicks in, right? That fear kicks in. So you got all these businesses going on. You're, you're still buying real estate, correct? Yes. You're never going to stop, it sounds like. Let me ask you, I know you said you bought all the you house hacked in the beginning and then you bought the properties next to them, the, the fourplexes and the duplexes. Once you passed those, when those were handled, how many of your properties that you bought since then you actually seen? Yeah, great question. I have bought properties where I, I've closed on them and I without seeing them. So I have bought sight unseen. And I have now I've seen the exterior of all of my properties, but I have not been inside of every unit. Mm. So how cool is that? There's some that she's never been inside. There's some that she's never even been on the outside and she's still making money off those deals. And it's possible. Now, how does she do it? You have to join our program, it sounds like, to learn that stuff. But there is a path. It's not fiction, right? I bought a short-term rental in the mountains two hours away, and I literally put an offer on it and was under contract before I even got a chance to see it. So, And that's only two hours away. Sarah's in like New Zealand, you know, putting offers on deals and stuff like that So while running her business and her lifestyle, which is so cool. So awesome. So you got all these businesses. What's your cash flow like now today, roughly? You don't have to give the exact number, but ballpark number with the 19 part doors that you have or 19 units. What's your cash flow look like now? Yeah. So as I mentioned, I'm a really risk adverse investor. So I'm setting aside 8% for vacancy, 5% for CapEx, 5% for maintenance, and another 8% for property management, even though I'm insane and I still self-manage all 19 of my units from afar. So with all that being accounted for, I net 10,000 a month, every month. And on really good months, I'm netting 14,000. Wow, ten to fourteen thousand. How many of you could actually do that? How many could you use that? Should I say? I remember when I got out of Marine Corps, I took a job. I was making like eighteen dollars and eighty eight cents an hour, and I'd do overtime for two hours every day, and it would take me probably a quarter, right, an entire quarter to get to that amount of money. And here she is getting that passively every month. You brought up something really good, Sarah. We'll touch on it slightly. You manage your own properties. Why do you do that verse property management? What's the mindset behind that? Yes. So first it started out as a frugal, frugal mindset. So I wanted to self-manage so that I could get to that cash flow number faster. Then I created my own problem 
when I buy a duplex, I'll have one of the units long-term and one of the units medium-term, that furnished rental. So I have not found a property management company that will manage the whole building or half the building mm -hmm. for a price that I'm happy with. So I went ahead and I hired an operations manager as well as a virtual assistant. And the three of us, we manage the properties. That's amazing. And guys, you know, I manage, I self manage my short term rental myself. And the reason why I'm do that, I do that is because there's actually tax benefits for doing that in your first year. And so I'm taking advantage of that. And I'm learning and growing because we're always growing. But in Sarah's situation, I, I might have a new resident or resident, I might have a new renter every, you know, three days. And so that can be a headache. But when she's talking medium term, she's talking about a month. So really outside of maybe like, hey, we ran out of, you know, towels or toilet paper, you know, she's not getting a call every day, right? It's yeah. maybe once, sometimes if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes you don't even hear from people, right? No. So I, I actually, so all of my tenants stay on average, I'm at 93 days on average. Mm. And then in 2021, 47% of my tenants extended from three months to six months. Oh. So in one unit, I'd have two tenants for the whole year. And so it doesn't me. So here's what's smart is she, she wasn't doing it from a scarcity mindset. She was actually saying, I'm going to save 8% on a monthly basis. Let's exclude that she couldn't find anyone because there are people, they just want to gouge you, but that's yeah. okay. Property managers are cool too. So I know not showering any hate on them, but uh, I have a different opinion, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you learn about that in her course guys. <laughs> <laughs> But it doesn't make sense to give up 8% of your revenue. 8% of $10,000 in a month is 800 bucks, right? Am I doing that right? Or, Yeah. And so why would you give up $800? That's a plane ticket across the country or maybe across the pond to Europe, right? So you have to be smart about what you're doing. It didn't come from a position of scarcity. It actually was an intelligent decision to say, hey, I can make, I might put in an hour max a month and get an $800, save 800 bucks. So she's, her hourly return is $800. How many of you are making $800 an hour? I didn't think so. So <laughs> awesome. Well, I absolutely love that. So you're crushing it. That's just your passive income. That's not talking about your, your coaching that you do at a distance, your design business at a distance, you're going on adventures with other awesome real estate people. So obviously you, you're living a pretty good life as it is right now. I would venture to say you are living life by design for you, correct? I think what was so important was I even look back at the last decade and even when I was working for someone else, it was a life by design. And so what I think is really unique about how I've structured my life is I figured out what I wanted and I did that and then I figured out how to pay for it. Mm, that's so good. So good. Everyone has a different opinion on what kind of lifestyle they want, right? Like, I'm glad that not everyone gets up and goes to Argentina and Brazil at the same time, right? Like, <laughs> it wouldn't be great. So, but whatever you want, that's what this whole channel and this millionaire series is about, is interviewing people who have done what you want to do so you can learn what they've done so you can walk that path if it's in your heart's desire to do that. Because like Sarah said, we only have so many days around the sun. We get one shot at this game of life. And so it's like you you live life your way. And honestly, and I'm speaking biasly here, but it starts with your mindset. It really does. Because some people believe they can't live that life or they can't do what Sarah's done, right? And that's just not true. And if you, well, actually it is true. If you believe that to be true, it is true for you because you won't take the action. Right. But if you believe that it's possible and all I have to do is put one foot in front of the other, I have to do one step at a time. And I know Sarah teaches this in her courses and her and uh, her programs. And so if you want to join, we'll have a link in the show notes for that. But that's what it takes is just focusing on what can I do today? What can I do tomorrow? And let's go from there. But having that long term vision that you're aiming at to get there. So, and I think Joe, what's really important is that some people's dreams are that they want to wake up on Saturday and go on a long bike ride, or they want to wake up on Sunday and spend more time with their kids or, or they want to spend it alone. <laughs> I'm sure some people are like, no, I would like more alone time. From time to time. Uh, <laughs> as a dad. 
And so, and so I think what's really important is I'm not teaching people to like burn the boats and buy a one-way ticket to Portugal. Um, unless you want to do that, then call me. But what I want people to do is I want them to start being honest with themselves about what they want and what you want right now. Someone asked me a beautiful question two days ago. He said, okay, so I understand, Sarah, you're really good at vision casting and you have a vivid vision and, but how how do I do it? And he was like, do I need to think like 10 years out, five years out? I was like, oh, I'm so glad you asked this because let's just do three years because there's no way that Sarah at 32 knows how Sarah at 42 is going to feel. I have no idea. There's so many unknowns that are going to happen. Am I going to fall in love? Are we going to have children? All of these things are unknown, but I, I can kind of see what Sarah three years from now is going to look like. Like I, I have a, that's a, that's easier for me with my small human brain to understand. So my hope is that people think, what do I want in the next, what do I want my life to look like three years from now? And then work backwards. And I hope that that feels a lot less stressful than trying to plan the next decade of your life. Yes. So good. So good. And so true. Right. And so you get an opportunity to have that short, well, I'll say short term vision compared to a 10 year vision, but it's like yeah. it becomes more real when you're in that three years versus that 10 years. Cause sometimes it seems so far down the path. You're like, yeah, I'm sure. So I love that. Okay. Awesome. Um, so We found out what you're doing, your journey, your path, where you are now, what you're doing, and all the epic fun that you have. You've helped a lot of the listeners hear about or learn about kind of some of the steps that they can take to get the ball rolling. But I just want to find out from you because we hear it in other interviews, so I'm going to ask the same thing, but maybe not the popular answer. But what's one book that's changed your life? Yeah. So I've already mentioned Tim Ferriss' four-hour work week. So I'll add another. The other would be, um, I love anything by Dan and Chip Heath. If you're an entrepreneur, you really got to pick up one of their books. Um, I really particularly like the book Switch by them. Okay. Very nice. And what's the best conference you've ever gone to? Because I heard you're a real estate or a conference junkie. I met you at a conference. So what's your best one? one? Oh man, that's really hard. Um, Okay. Don't want any other conference organizers to think that your conference wasn't great. However, one really stood out that I just went to. So it's a little bit of cheating because it's very fresh on the brain, but I went to a conference called the Dynamite Circle. DCBKK is what they call it. It's because it's in Bangkok, Thailand. Mm -hmm. And why I loved this conference is it was entrepreneurs from all over the world. And when they asked me, oh, where do you live? And I said, I don't. They said, yeah, me neither. And that was the end of the conversation. Whereas when I travel to real estate conferences, which I love, I love real estate conferences. If I tell people I'm nomadic, they're like, what? Oh, breaking up the conversation. Whereas at D, that that part of the conversation and dive into the really juicy stuff of entrepreneurship. Love it, love it. Okay, you cut out for a second, but we caught the ending of it. So. I love that. Okay. Well, no, no hate to any of the other conferences out there. Um, okay. Last question is if you could give someone one piece of advice, no matter what it is, whether it's real estate or life or anything, or maybe it's even your 18 year old self, but what would that one piece of advice be? Yep. Two words. Don't wait. Mm, why that? I recently had dinner with someone whose sister um, is 42 years old, and that sister had an Antarctica trip planned for her 40th birthday. She had made that decision when she was probably 34, 35, and when she was 39, about seven months before that Antarctica trip, she had a stroke. She was completely healthy. It was, um, doctors still don't understand why it happened. And she became nonverbal and immobile for a few months. And she never went on that trip to Antarctica. 
and her life will never be the same. So I, I, I doubt that she's really that upset about Antarctica. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other struggles in her life. However, her sister couldn't stop fixating on that, that why didn't she go for her 36th birthday or her, or the, just go because of the, just because like, don't even wait until your birthday. And so whatever your trip is, whether it's Antarctica or I even love to say this, like if there's someone in your life that you need to say, Hey, I love you and I have feelings for you and I want our relationship to look different. Don't wait to have that conversation. Whatever it is, I, I just want people not to wait. So good. I love that. And sorry to hear about that, you know, with your friend and it's not fun to experience, but I love the message, right? Like, don't wait. And it reminds me that we're going to Maui for New Year's or two days after Christmas. Uh, we're going to stay at Brandon Turner's Airbnb. Um, but now I got to tell my wife, we're not waiting. We're going to go next weekend. So no, <laughs> <laughs> just throw even more money on top of it, right? So no, that's awesome. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on the Millionaire Series. Your your story, your message, the knowledge bombs you dropped, the heart that you brought. We really appreciate you jumping on today. So before we let you go, please tell people if they're interested in your program, your coaching, or maybe they're like, oh, yeah, I just bought my first Airbnb and I have no clue how to furnish it. How can people get a hold of you and or join your programs? Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. I urge anyone, if you heard something that you liked today, please reach out. You're not bothering me. I love, love, love hearing from you. The best way to get a hold of me is, of course, Instagram. It's Sarah D. Weaver um, is my Instagram handle. But if you want to learn any more about what I do, the best place to go is my website, sarahdweaver.com. Beautiful. So make sure you go there. We'll put everything in the show notes. We'll make sure that you guys have those links. So look in the comments or in the uh, show notes below and then comment. What did you think? What did you like? What was one golden nugget? And if you like these videos with, you know, talking to millionaires about how they did it in their journey, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn on the notification button. But with that, Sarah, thank you so much again. You rocked it today. We are excited to have you. And everyone, thank you for tuning in. Have a great one. See you guys. Thanks, Joe.